All right, hopefully you can see everything. Um, hi guys, I'm Brittany Mitchell. I am the marketing manager for Inkyard Press. Um, I'm filling in for Lynette Kim, who is a library marketing manager who couldn't be here today, um, but I have her contact information at the end too, should you want any galleys um, or have any questions. All right, so we're gonna dive into our Wonder 21 list. All right, so first off we have one of the good ones. Um, by Maika and Maritza Malit. Um, their debut novel came out last year, Dear Haiti Love Elaine, um, and this is their sophomore novel. The phrase, one of the good ones, is a contentious one used against communities of color. Sister author Joe and Maritza and Maika Malit are out to turn the phrase on its head with their sophomore novel, One of the Good Ones. When, so when teen social activist Kezi Smith dies under mysterious circumstances while in police custody, she's another immortalized victim in the fight against police brutality. But of course, her family is left reeling. Her younger sister, Happy, in particular, starts to question the way the world is memorializing her sister. Good student, ambitious, angelic, AKA one of the good ones. But by contrast, another girl who disappeared on the same fateful day, but who had a much rougher upbringing is pretty much forgotten. As Happy struggles with this unfair distinction while navigating the trauma of losing Kezi, she and her other sister, Jenny, embark on a journey to honor Kezi in their own way by taking a road trip that Kezi had been planning for them using an heirloom copy of the Green Book as their guide. For Happy, this will be a journey both of self-discovery and of discovering things about her late sister she thought she knew. But there's a twist to the story, one that's both hopeful and will, will force us as readers to confront the title of the book head on. MBA finalist Laura Ruby, who's author of The Bone Gap, calls this book a thrilling and thrillingly intricate genre-bending blend of mystery, road trip, and coming-of-age novel. One of the Good Ones investigates intergenerational racial trauma through the eyes of three very different sisters while it testifies to the power of love and hope in spite of such, such trauma. And this one is out January 5th. All right, and then next up we have The Iron Raven, which hopefully is a bit of a surprise and delight for those who grew up um, and fell in love with the Iron Fae series. Um, if you do not know the Iron Fae series, this was an international best-selling series. Um, and Julie thought it was the perfect time to bring it back with a fresh spin um, with the same characters. And this time it is told through the eyes of beloved prankster and fan favorite Puck. So there is something here for longtime series fans, but also for new readers as this does stand alone from the series. But if you do want to go back and read the series, um, during 2020, we have been releasing these beautiful um, 10th anniversary special editions. These have bonus content, um, sneak peeks of the new trilogy, and um, they're stunning. I love them so much. All right. And then next up, we have Roman and Joel by Dana L. Davis. Um, if Romeo and Juliet got the Hamilton treatment, who would play the Broadway leads? Roman and Joel is an own voices novel star starring Jersey James, a teen who gets a shot at her dream part in a Broadway hip hopper version of Romeo and Juliet. Along the way, she encounters everything from a heart-stopping romantic interest, both on stage and off, and a showbiz arch nemesis who turns out to be more than meets the eye. Dana L. Davis is herself both a Hollywood and um, voiceover actor, and she did a ton of research to give readers a delightful behind-the-scenes um, look at New York City's Broadway, which I feel like we need right now since we don't have Broadway shows until, until the new year. All right, and then next up we have This Golden Flame um, by Emily Victoria. This is um, a debut novel um, and Emily is actually a librarian herself. Um, she's a Canadian librarian and it's about an orphan named Karis who's grown up as a reluctant servant to the mysterious scriptorium. That's her country's ruling group of scribes. The scriptorium has one focus. It wants to unlock the magic of an ancient automation army that's been dormant for 200 years. Karis has been playing along, but what she really has been doing is biding her time until she can make a run for it and look for her brother, who was shipped off when they were younger. When she finally thinks she's found the chance, she does the impossible. She stumbles upon one of the infamous automations and manages to awaken it. But this automation is nothing like what she's grown up hearing about. His name is Alex, he's intelligent and emotive, and he can't remember why he was created that way. Suddenly, the scriptorium is hunting both Karis and Alex, the two go on the run together, launching an epic adventure that leads to the startling discovery that finding Karis' brother might go hand in hand with finding out the secret of Alex's origin story. And both could, could expose just how senator the scriptorium's plans have been all along. 
this golden flame I've mentioned before is written by a librarian, uh, but it's also filled with these lovable cinnamon roll-like characters um, that you just want to cheer for and fall in love with. And next up, we have The Flip Side of Perfect by Liz Reinhardt. Um, I love this book. It is a coming of age story about the teen daughter of divorced parents who has felt obligated nearly all of her life to maintain two very different lives and has lost a sense of who she really is in the process. She spends her school year with her mother in Michigan, where she's this uber responsible oldest of three sisters who desperately needs her. Um, and then her summers as more carefree with her father in Florida, where she's the baby of a beloved step family. Um, but in one transformational summer, her worlds are about to collide. She's going to fall in love. And in the process, she's going to find out who she is. And maybe that person is someone who's been a little bit of both versions of herself all along. And then up next, we have These Feathered Flames by Alexandra Overy. Um, this is a debut novel. Um, this is the first book in a duology inspired by the Russian folk tale and ballet, The Firebird. It's a kingdom of Torin. In the kingdom of Torin, whenever twin girls are born, those two sisters can expect to take on one of two roles when their mother passes away. That is either be the new queen or to become the mystical firebird. Together, they can ensure that the kingdom and magical remain in, in balance in the kingdom. However, when the current queen, the mothers of twins Isa and Isa, mysteriously die, early death, they're thrust into the roles both either are ready for. The two sisters who were separated in childhood for training and now reunite in court must take on their roles, discover who they can trust, who murdered their mother, all while learning if they can even trust each other. This is a gorgeous fantasy with lots of twists and turns, and Alexandra Overy is a fantastic author. She's young, she really knows her stuff, and we're excited to see um, how she grows in the YA space. And then another debut author we have is Jessica Olsen and Sing Me Forgotten. This is a gender-bent magical retelling of the Phantom of the Opera. Um, it takes place in sort of an alternate fantasy version of Paris, and it stars a young woman who was born with the ability to both infiltrate and manipulate memories through song, something that, as you can imagine, is outlawed in the magical world. She's been hiding all her life in this opera house from a world that shuns her, but she may have to risk becoming the monster they think that she is when she inadvertently endangers the young men with whom she falls in love with. Even though we call this a retelling of Phantom, it's utterly unique in its premise and it has a very shocking ending. <laughs> so I'm excited for you guys to read it. All right, and then the last of our front list titles today um, is Five Ways to Fall Out of Love by Emily Martin. Aubrey Cash believes that scientifically love is un an unrealistic construct. Though it's possible she's jaded from personal experience, not only is her parents' marriage falling apart, but she had this, she had spent the summer falling from the new boy next door, Webster, only to have him stand her up at homecoming in front of everyone with no explanation. She responds by slashing his tires at the dance. <laughs> Needless to say, these two spend the rest of the school year at each other's throats. Then she falls for, of all people, Webster's cousin Holland, a boy with a heart of gold. Suddenly, Webster is starting to act a little bit strange. And the guy that Aubrey can't stop thinking about isn't Holland, but it's Webster. And all her scientific theories about love are put to the test. If you want perfectly likable characters in a romantic comedy of errors, this isn't the book for you. But if you want realistic, flawed teens who make frustrating choices and have to learn how to find their way back to redemption, then you'll love this one. And then lastly, um, we do have a few noteworthy paperbacks that are coming out. Storm and Fury, um, the sequel, Rage and Ruin, just released this past summer. Um, Crown of Coral and Pearl, um, the sequel is actually releasing in a couple weeks. King Lucy and Stone, keep an eye out for that one. Um, both of these were Florida Teen nom nominees for this past year. And then, as I mentioned earlier, Dear Haiti, Love Elaine from the Maliks. And then Don't Read the Commons is a great one if you haven't picked it up. We have, we've given it a fresh new cover. Um, and it's a current BFYA nominee, and that's coming in April. And thank you so much again for joining us. This is not me. <laughs> this is Lynette. Um, but if you have any, for quest any questions for her, please reach out um, for any requests. Thank you, guys.